what's up, guys? I want to welcome you back to another episode of Street Theology. It is your boy, Pastor Adrian. I am joined by two incredible co-hosts, plural, today. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. You know, again, got to see in English, so... <laughs> But like I always say, C's get degrees. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All y'all over there judging me right now. But anyway, but that being said, you hear the voices. I am joined by Cincinnati's finest. Again, no longer the Clay Thompson. You down as Haslam, my podcast, the okay. UD a podcast, goon a podcast, <laughs> hardworking, <laughs> Pastor Derek Hayes. What's happening, man? What's up, y'all? Glad to be with you, with you both. Got to be with the people. There we go. Pastor Derek's got that look. He's got that look of having young kids in the house right now. <laughs> that sleepy look. He got young kids in the house, man. Yeah, he can't Ooh. take a nap. <laughs> he can't. And we are joined by the one who got no kids. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Newly married. Hey. My man, Trey Zoda. Trey, what's happening, man? I'm happy to be back. No, not a whole lot. There we yeah. go. Trey's back again. He came on, didn't fumble the bag the first time he was on it, yeah. and now we brought him on back. You know what I'm saying? Again, keeping this podcast diverse. You know what I'm saying? Normally, you know, it's three black people. Here. <laughs> it's okay. It's so, okay. You know what it feels like right now to be a minority, I mean, right? I, mean, Come on. I keep coming back to like, why was I hired? Why, you know, why did, why did, why did Pastor Ray you want me? It's like, oh. I had to meet that quote, homie. <laughs> Engage all about diversity, pushing it forward. <laughs> Got to bring the white guy. Yeah, like, there we go. Diversity man. day. Diversity yeah, day. <laughs> here we go. But guys, no, we're so excited you guys are here and joining us again. The point of street theology is to help you be really to be an innovative reconciler. That's a deep passion that we have here at Engage is to see innovative reconcilers. These uh, men and women who are connected to God, one another, they're meaningful work in the earth and sent out to, uh, to do that meaningful work. And street theology, we want to bring uh, theological things and bring them down to a street level, to the everyday life. Many times theology is something that's so can be so disconnected from our everyday lives uh, we know big words we understand we have these deep concepts but there's no real wisdom and so what we try to do is take theological things and bring them down to real wisdom um uh things we talk about guests we uh have on and so I want to encourage you guys a couple quick announcements don't forget uh christmas eve service is online 6 p.m coming up again we have no service in our physical location um here in tallahassee on december 27th we take the last sunday off again enjoy your holiday season or Christmas season. So that being said, today, guys, man, um, our last podcast, we had someone who, man, I really kind of consider an OG uh, mm -hmm. in my life, Pastor <laughs> Dave Gibbons. And man, that podcast that was, was just so full of stuff. And, and what we're going to do is kind of reflect on that because so many times you can listen to a podcast. I don't know if you guys ever had one. You listen to a podcast, it's really good. And then you just move on. You know, and so what we want to do with this one is actually, man, do a deeper dive. So what I'm going to ask you guys just first real quick, man, what was your initial take? What's maybe a highlight or something from the pod uh, that you guys enjoyed? Yeah, I I definitely, you know, enjoyed watching the two of you. I know we always joke like that's your Asian twin and stuff like that. So it, <laughs> it, it was good to kind of just be a fly on the wall, so to speak. And just listen to you guys go and, and just kind of uh, as far as leadership and how you guys think outside of the box um, with it. But besides that, I man, one of the things that I was really, really, I think you really hammered home for me was, was the ideas about the way the way I would say it is uh, the humility that I think it's that's going to happen before there's a great move of God. And we talked a lot about the shaking that's happening within, you know, Christendom within maybe just as we can say, like the white evangelical space yeah. and how mm -hmm. it's kind of on its last gasp and, yeah. and how people have to get used to, you know, brown and black leadership, th those, those types of things. And then just leadership in general, in terms of it being, uh, being taken away from a central, you know, more centralized where the church is kind of used to holding power. Um, and, you know, so as someone who, like who's in the, you know, is, who's a, holds a role as a pastor, man, that's th those things are interesting to me. And I want to make sure that I don't get caught up in, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I, I yeah. want to walk and move with God. God, the way he's moving now. Yeah. So those things were very, very uh, impressed on me, man. So it was awesome. That's great. Trey? Yeah, to give off a lot of what Pastor Derek was saying for sure, uh, I think that it was just really uh, encouraging to my soul personally to hear how much your vision and his vision mm -hmm. line up to, you know, whenever things are that close, it really just, just kind of echo home. It's like, man, this isn't coming from these two really wise human beings. This is coming from our living God who, yeah. who is giving this That's direction great. of where he wants the church to go, where he wants this movement that we have here at Engage, where, where that's pushing forward. Um, again, kind of pigeon tailing a little bit off what Pastor Derek said. I think that one of the things that really struck home with me is how, um, you know, for the past 50, 100, 150 years, the movement of white evangelicals in the United States has really been at the forefront of Christianity. That Those two things have been synonymous whenever people think about Christianity. A lot of times mm. it gets kind of this whitewashed view. Mm -hmm. And I feel like 
God is really calling um, for that movement to step back and for us to help elevate black mm-hmm. and brown leaders. There, there is a, a big part of that that I feel like is, and, and Pastor Dave was saying this, that um, kind of with reparations, that, that's something that's really being pushed forward. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm just really excited to continue to unpack this with you guys today and just for everything that God has planned for 2021 and beyond. Yeah. And, and again, whenever I am on there and I have time spending with Pastor Dave, it's just, you know, you learn, you know, I always learn something new. But more than anything, I think for me, you always feel like you get some level of like confirmation Mm -hmm. um, that you're not like crazy, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think even from that pod uh, to just a couple of things and and some other uh, places I've been in sitting with some other, you know, kind of people who are very notable um, within Christianity over the last 20 years that just like talking to them and even them maybe operating from a different perspective, but then hearing saying, hey, just kind of talking about where I feel like we're going. And then them and these guys who've led at super, super high levels are like just like it resonating with them. And mm-hmm. and so you don't feel, you know, like crazy. I don't know if you guys have had, we just had these moments where you're like, I just don't feel crazy. Yeah. You know, for a long time, you, you think it's right, yeah. but you don't know. Yeah. You really don't know. And now like the more and more, not because human beings have to, you know, if God gives your word, you, you're obedient to it, which I feel like we've been. But there is something about when you're like, oh, somebody else, they're starting to see it, you know? And I think that's what uh, was really impressed upon me. And I just think, you know, again, going back to what he said about the, you know, the black and brown leadership. And I think, you know, I want to make sure that I say this is that I think this is not the, avo- this is not the the pushing away of, of white leadership. Yeah, it's just the, actual, the idea of just like a healthy yeah. balance, you right. know, because a lot of times, honestly, within church space, it's majority almost, you know, white leadership um and i think god's wanting to really elevate real leadership when we say leadership real power yeah right. as well you know what i'm saying and i also think that's going to become with the idea of with uh females as well of having real power and authority mm-hmm. to act however god you know in whatever the spaces and places god has given people and so um that was kind of the thing for me of that i agree with him on that but also you know there's not the avoidance of it and so uh today guys we're going to jump into man just some of the questions that he kind of you know some of the things that came out of it and yeah. to kind of do a deeper dive because i think there's so much gold that was there and and you can kind of just skim and go but i mean if you take some deep dives into it um i think it was really important so one of the things is that you know this idea you know people talk about this decentralization of power like like what do you guys think that like what do you think that was going to mean the decentralization of power in the church you know what do you think that maybe what that looks like um maybe even explain what you guys want to explain what it's been and why this maybe has to happen you know yeah right yeah i mean you know it was it's, it's really funny because you know i think in a very prophetic sense when covid hit that was one of the first things that you said. One of the first things that we were we were talking about was that this was a this was another. I mean, it was street theology, so we can go there. This is another moment that you can see even biblically, where when people start to gather, when God's people start to stay still, every time in the Bible where God God does something, God will allow something to happen, and then people scatter. And that was one of the first things yep. that you said was what's been happening. We, you, you were talking about the trap house and how yep. the, <laughs> to the church has been, you know, you stagnant because everybody comes to the quote unquote professionals uh, for everything. And, and I think for, just simply put, just to get the conversation going, I think when we talk about decentralizing, we're really talking about the priesthood of the believer, that that's what this whole story has been about. And from Genesis one is this priesthood of people who would go forth and cause human flourishing. And the, and the moment that we start staying still is the moment where God's like, no, nah, that's, that's, that's exactly what I do not want. We saw it with Tyra Babel. We saw it with Day of Pentecost, all those things, you know, and God doesn't want it. So, so in other words, it means what we need to prepare for then yeah. is, you know, for, for you guys who are listening, pre- prepare for God to say, man, I'm, no, I want to use you. I don't, you, I want you to be connected to your church, connected in, in meaningful relationship, but I'm not going to have you looking to leadership to uh, as, 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 as to what the church is going to do. You are the church and I want you to be about my business. What And whatever corner of the world that I called you to paint in, that's where you go and you paint. So I think the first thing is kind of getting a, a breath of like, wow, I'm going to need some courage here. Yeah. So yeah. I got to step out. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I think about it just trying to Think of an analogy that would work for this situation. So, you know, if you ever have like an old uh, Ethernet cable that you plug into the back of your computer, you know, it's like 
one computer plugged into the internet and that's the way that the church has been operating mm -hmm. and the thing that we've been plugged into hopefully if it's been working right is the gospel but like you were saying that very tower of babel centralized network mm -hmm. and i think that kind of what pastor dave was getting across in this podcast is that we're meant to be operating in more of a wi-fi network so we have mm -hmm. all of these devices point, that are here people can use it like really god is calling his people to be that hot spot to go into different mm -hmm. areas that other people can connect to yep. and it's not one central source it's something that you can go and take and give to other people and mm -hmm. i think that the way that that's going to happen is through human develop human development and preparing people building them up giving life skills mm -hmm. but having that biblical solid base of being able to know and tell the story of god yeah and, and I, I, I really like what he was saying because because if if we stay more insulated, then it's then it really because I caught what you were saying that what, that Pastor Dave was saying is ideal. He we can call it discipleship, but he's gonna call it leadership development because those that's a language that we use. But the more insular we are, we can afford to use disciple and blah blah blah. But as God pushes us out, mm -hmm. there's going to be a need for you to know. Yes, I know my Bible. Yes, I know theology. But yes, I know how to develop people. I know what you you, you know. What I'm saying like you have yeah. to push and use language that everybody you know is using and not just so so stuck so i i love that idea and and for me i you know i know like pastor Adrian, you talked a lot about hey for us that is the nehemiah institute and stuff like that and that's if you're wondering man why why would we bother to do something like that is because of this idea of a pipeline and really helping people not not just with theology and just the story of god but everything that comes along with it because life is so multifaceted yeah, and I mean, I think both of you guys have made you know incredible points. I love the analogy of the of the Wi Fi because I do think I mean again we you know having you know we have past pass, sorry Pastor Mark Sayers on the pod and mm -hmm. and he talks a lot about the idea of the network and that what you oh, see yeah. with the the Wi you know with the network mm -hmm. that there's multiple connection points you know what I mean mm -hmm. that's why we had unfortunately I mean you know there's a lot of benefits of being able to be connected that's also the negatives of that's why we've probably seen a pandemic. Uh, spread across the globe as fast yeah. as we did because we are connected like we once were and we can get some we get places faster my whole thing about this idea of decentralization and why i think it's needed is that i don't think i think so many times you know we will look back in the past and we can easily talk on the past being so bad right so i want to first start off by saying like you know we've seen like you know these big mega churches and like a big gatherings and you know what well if it was the you know the the you know the seeker friendly movement and, right. and we saw a lot of these big churches yeah i actually you know the more i ponder this i actually don't think it was bad i think like anything the human disposition is that these things become more important than what like they become more important than they were just really they are they were containers um, they weren't the content. The content was, man, how do we you think about Bill Hybels and, and Willow Creek? The whole thing for Bill Hybels, like, man, how do we create a church that actually that those who are lost would like to come to? Yeah. Right. He started off with the, as a guy who's an evangelist, a real heart to reach people. And he even went on later said, man, we should have done this. We should have corrected this more. Mm -hmm. So there was all those things that were there. And, and you know, from Rick Warren and on and on. Here's the point, though, is that when it's all said and done, I think God used a real season was through the Jesus movement on where he was gathering a lot of people coming into faith and all that. Yeah, okay. I think what happened is that then that became the thing. And mm. instead of, but the point was to gather, to sin, to gather sin, but gathering became the thing mm. that we wanted to keep. And we were saying, yeah, yeah we're sending people, yeah. but really we weren't. So now the, so now that became the more, the important thing versus more. We wanted God wants to gather, train, develop to send to the world. Yeah, and I right. think we, we became more obsessed with that but let me tell you this that's that's human history you read throughout yeah, the bible yeah, that's yeah. all this it it's like israel gets real impact israel mm -hmm. starts making the, israel starts having influence and culture and society yeah. and now israel mm -hmm. becomes more about keeping power keeping their structures in place versus always being a people that were called to be a blessing to the nation it became about how do we keep the blessing to ourselves they right. want to keep the blessing to themselves but they were always called in abraham and, and from abraham to be a blessing to the world and what does god yeah. do and when it happens when you try to keep the blessing to yourself mm. it always corrupts you when yeah. you try to keep mm. god's like it corrupts you because now it becomes about you and never about other people you, that power corrupts you that's why power isn't bad but when you keep power that's why you have to give it away mm. and so what god has to do because it turns us inside sinful patterns whatever whatever then he brings a moment, they are the Lord, whatever, to get his people to wake mm -hmm. up, hopefully come to a place of repentance to then do what? To then keep going. And so I think the thing is he's decentralized. What we have to learn is to constantly 
build in such a way to keep giving power away. If we that's can good. live in a place to constantly give power away, mm -hmm. that's where I think the constant help, that's going to be the, the place for us that engage as we continue to move forward is will we be a place when, again, when you're a startup or we you know when you're like that, you know, I was telling people when you're like that, that scrappy upstart, you know, you're like, man, we just, man, we're just out here. We're on the grind and, and it's just humble beginnings, whatever. Mm -hmm. As things continue to pick up, like they're starting to engage, will we keep that same mentality of, man, we always empower. Yeah. We always empower, you know, for those who are listening, who are part of our community, man, will you always empower those who have, lead, will you empower? Because that's how things begin to be turned on the inside yeah. when you don't empower and you don't have that base. And so I kind of think it's super important that we live that way. And so um, here's the next thing is that, you know, he talks about this idea of what is keeping us from seeing, you know, this idea of a cargo versus a cruise ship, right? You know, he tries to start yeah. being this cruise ship. <clears throat> yeah. And he says, versus this idea of a cargo ship, right? You know, remember, like, remember cargo, you remember ships used to be go and just yeah. deliver stuff move on then they're cruise ships i mean you just hang out there you know right. what i'm saying he made a great point it's so true mm -hmm. when i go on a cruise ship i'm like yeah, yeah i get you know, yeah, like why am i getting all, you know and i always food is banging food is banging yeah. you know, like, man, we, we're still, listen, i mean again if you're from freeport bahamas like shout out to you shout but like when right. but when i get to but when every time i do that i'm gonna get off the boat like, why don't i just get off the boat to go to freeport like i just like you know what i'm saying like i mean that's not a knock on freeport but i always like why don't i just get off this boat like it ain't like food is bad like you know what i'm saying i'm like let me go back on the boat like i literally yeah. do that and i'm like i should have yeah, never yeah. done that Point being is like, yeah, but you yeah. want to stay on a cruise ship because it's lovely. I mean, you got, you know, you got fine dining, you got slides. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You got mm -hmm. video games, all you can eat food, you know, you got casino. I mean, you got all you yeah. want right yeah. there, but it's never meant to be a cruise ship. It's always meant to be a cargo to go and deliver. Yeah. So the point I think is like, man, like how do we get back to that? You know, what are practical mm -hmm. ways we feel like we get back to that? Well, I think, and I don't want this language to sound too harsh, but I feel like part of being a cruise ship is you don't have any needs that need to be satisfied. There's no thought that goes into it because everything is, you know, people that get paid millions of dollars think out, Hey, what's the most convenient way? Uh, you know, one of the things like at Disney world on Disney cruises is they have a trash can every 30 feet so mm -hmm. that you don't have to think about throwing your trash away. Mm -hmm. Anytime that you have something, you just look and you can see mm -hmm. something and go to it. So it's yeah. at a point that the thought process is taken out of everything. Wow. You don't have to worry about food. You don't have to worry yeah. about anything else. And I feel like there's a lot of ways that the church has done that for mm -hmm. the people that are there. And the word that I would use, which again, you know, it's gonna sound strong is coddle. So I think that the church has done a lot of coddling for um, yeah. its members that are there, that there's a lot of ways that, mm -hmm. you know, obviously the church is called to take care of needs for people. I think that it's gone above and beyond that though, to a mm -hmm. point that it's uh, created dependency and it's not yeah. taught people how to live on their own and to yeah. utilize that. So some of the things that we're talking about with human development, finding your meaningful work, mm -hmm. being authentic. I feel like a lot of the way with this really centralized church model, what this has done is it has sucked the air out of the room and it doesn't let people be individuals. It's just this collective whole of the church overall. Yeah. And so kind of in this, this mesh of people that are together, mm -hmm. um, people are going for, they're, they're going for, um, you know, their elderly Bible study. You, you don't have to think about it. Like no matter what part throughout your life, mm -hmm. you just turn to the church for that resource mm -hmm. versus having to be resilient yeah. and look on your community to, yeah. to do that. Yeah. yeah and I, I, yeah, I, I think about, I think it's in Mark eight, man. And, and, and yeah, how, how do we, how do we not go there? One of the things that you always see Jesus doing is pressing into the disciples. Where is your faith? Mm -hmm. So when he gets That's to the great. point where I've already, you already watched me come through and feed 4,000 of these people. Here we are again. And in Mark eight, he says, you feed them. Wow. And it's yeah. that part of leadership. So when we talk about, you know, so you might be wondering out there, why do we talk so much about leadership and why don't we use a word like disciple It's because part of it has to do with, you know, if everything is for you, it, it, it should start saying, man, are you making disciples to the point where, man, people, you, you, you become a resource for other people? Because at that moment, Jesus was like, man, I, I'm going to provide, but it's going to be through you. So he had, he had the disciples do all this preparation. So for leaders, mm -hmm. man, you the other people get all the, they get the provision, but the preparation is coming through your leadership. Mm -hmm. And that's different from, Hey, I got the slot machine. Hey, I got the fancy food. Hey, I got all this. It's, it's like saying, man, well, 
can you bring someone to your house and off of your faith? Not, not, and not in a way, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, not in a way yeah, where yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, but, yeah. But, but what are people feeding off from your faith? How are you in somebody's life and you're, you're calling out faith in them? Are you, are you believing God with them? And so I think that's, I think that's how you do it is, is, is allow the church. And I, I love engage for this pastor agent. I love your leadership for by saying, no, man, can you, and that's what we, well, that's what we call a leader. Can you carry, are you carrying weight to, or the mission mm -hmm. because that changes the whole thing when it's got to be you mm -hmm. and not just what you keep getting like you were saying i was gonna say mm -hmm. to go to kind of go back to that cruise ship analogy so thinking about if you have the trash cans every 30 feet mm -hmm. then there's no thought in your mind about the responsibility that you're carrying to throw away the trash mm -hmm. to get to there mm -hmm. and going back to that cargo ship idea the idea that you are responsible for what you're carrying which yeah. should be the gospel yeah. and should be weight that's of great. caring for other people and then taking that out so that that's a great way pastor Derek could be putting it of um you know just having and carrying that responsibility being responsible for other people mm -hmm. and for for their faith and for their walk as well as your own mm -hmm. yeah and i think that you know when you think of a you know the idea of this cargo ship it's it's being able to go in a cargo ship went and and deploy things and 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 i think for us how we become that is there's a reality, you know, we like to use, you know, here we talk about this idea of an aircraft carrier. If you think about an aircraft carrier, just like a cargo ship, but just mm -hmm. like a cruise ship, they're both, all of them are big. It's not about, oh man, because you know, sometimes today in church, we talk about man, the, like the size of the church, right? Well, right. we get too big, it's not that. It's not about, I see, I think we end up focusing on like, we end, uh, of like kind of like secondary issues. The issue isn't having large churches mm -hmm. or even sometimes large buildings. The issue is that are those buildings, are those places like sending centers? Are those places equipping people? I don't care if you have a church of 50 people or you have a church of yeah, 50 true. million people. Mm -hmm. It's about are you equipping them? And I think that's what we have to do. We have to be like an aircraft carrier. And I think that's what we really are passionate about here at Engage. And you think about an yeah. aircraft carrier, but the difference the aircraft carrier, you have 200 fighter pilots. And that's how a church has been a lot of times. You have 200 fighter pilots, so it's like the paid ministers, right? Mm -hmm. Those are the fighter pilots. Right. So, and then you have 4,800 other people who are just the, the those in congregation who we make sure this is, you know, we make sure that the the ship is good and the kids ministry things good and this is good and and all these things are good whatever but hey the the, the ministers you guys are out there doing yeah. the evangelism you guys are out yeah. there yeah. doing all the work and hey, you're going all these visits you're doing that versus saying this and again and i understand why people do that is because when you don't build and have it from the ethos of your within your culture it should be hey all five thousand people should be man all five thousand people are fighter pilots right and we all have a responsibility wow. on the aircraft carrier. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, hey, so I tell people all the time, some people like, you know, like Pastor Derek, man, he is in full time, he about full time ministry. And man, so they're working more on the aircraft carrier, you know, making sure systems are good. Because mm -hmm. again, you need to have that. I got to tell people, man, you got to make sure the, the aircraft carrier is clean. You got to make sure that, man, there's food that's being cooked. You got to make sure the, that the engines are working well. Yeah. People have to take care of the aircraft carrier. But somebody like me, though, yes, and, and leading, but being bivocational, man, it's like I do my part. I use my skill set here. Well, on the aircraft carrier, but then also it's like a fire. I'm flying out right somewhere else, other places. And that's what we want to do with other people, man. Some people, mm -hmm. your job and this is your home. It's your aircraft carrier. All we say is, hey, while you're here, use your gift within it. Yeah, that may be yeah. once a month, once every two months, whatever. But you're that's out great. there starting this. You're serving this nonprofit, man. Right now, you know, as a, as a mom, I mean, you're just you're in, a, you're in the thick of just man raising those babies right now and, and working. And so, and with the and you and the husband, he's working too. Y'all raising kids together. So right yeah, now, yeah. that is your mission. Mm -hmm. And man, you only can give like, hey, serving once a month. Okay, that's okay. But we got to be a place where we're constantly sending. And so it's that constant battle of being that. And then you're actually sending to go into like, you know, being able to go into that idea of the mission. So I think the idea, yeah. I like more the aircraft carrier. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You're in there. Yeah, you know, one of the things Pastor Dave talked about this idea of like scarcity brings clarity. When you hear that scarcity brings clarity, what does that mean to you? Like when you think of scarcity brings clarity. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I think that, uh, no you know, it, it's talking about the ability to really see what's there and what's not there based on like, man, the, if there is a, you know, so for COVID, you know, I think that definitely in the context of 2020 and, mm -hmm. and COVID where man, things are, things are really, really scarce. And it brings this focus. It brings this yeah, real yeah, clarity yeah, about yeah, yeah, what's yeah. important. Yes. And you, but you, but you can also see, man. So what, what's, what's been missing this whole time? What is there? What, what's not? I, I, I really, 
I really love that question, even for you, Pastor Adrian, when it comes to, man, how can our people capitalize on on that idea of just, man, we're in the middle of COVID 2021, like we said before, yeah. probably is not really going to be any different, man. <laughs> how, how do like in, a, in very practical ways yeah. as man, as scarcity is, is obvious, man, how do people how can our people take advantage uh, what are some things that you do as a person that, that is, is a thinker, mm -hmm. entrepreneur? Not not that they have people have to go in business for themselves, but you know what I'm saying? Like, what yeah, does it look I, like? I think it's this. It's like I tell people, man, like, you know, it's innovation, ingenuity just a lot of times comes from places of like desperation. Right. So when you don't have and you only have a little. See, I don't think like I tell people all the time. I'm not super impressed from a creativity and innovation standpoint with people with tons and tons of like money because I don't think it really many times, I don't know how it practically really applies. When you were like, man, we got $500. How can we make this work? Yeah. You become the main things become the main things. Mm -hmm. See, I think so this goes in. So let's go to spiritually. When you're facing, man, a pandemic or, you know, you ever see it with someone who, man, may have a sickness that's really serious, you, all of a sudden, like, oh, there's a reality. I don't know how much life I have left. Mm -hmm. Things come into real focus of what I care about. Yeah. I want to tell people what you should, what, the most important thing to do is in these moments is to say, like, take these moments, even if, man, you, your job's still going well and, man, yeah. health is well, all this, but to say, Take the mentality to say, okay, what are the main things? Don't make life mm -hmm. make you have to have clarity. Mm -hmm. Don't yeah. make That's suffering really make you have to have clarity. I am, you know, walking through some things with people, you know, um, you know, walking through this week, sitting in, in a hospital with someone who was, I mean, I mean, literally one, like a half a second away from easily could have like lost their life yeah. in a car wreck. And someone did lose their life in that car wreck. As I'm yeah. sitting there with that person and they're laying in the hospital bed and we're talking, I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, God, what are the main things in my life? Like, what are the main mm -hmm. things? If I were sitting there, what would I care about? Mm -hmm. And I started realizing, like, yeah, I really would not care about. And I was convicted about arguing with people on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I could care less yeah. about them. Yeah. Seriously. Like, I mean, not like not as humans, but like I don't like why am I gonna do that? Like many times we argue with internet trolls, like that is a <laughs> sure sign of like a first world problem. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Arguing like with people on the internet. Do, I'm like, yo, like, crazy. man, like it's crazy. So I tell people, learn. So you ask me what mm -hmm. you do, man. When you like if you say your things are going great in your life, that doesn't mean like you live in fear, but man, sit there and say, okay, always always have a, a, a list, man. What are the main things? Yeah. Like, you know, and again, I'll and I'll, I'll kind of want to hear Trace, so I'll sum this up quick. Get your list. Say, what's the first tier things that mm -hmm. for you to accomplish what it is in your life? What are the first tier things in your life? Don't have more than five. Like, yeah. what are the first tier things? And like that always takes precedent over anything else, right? Yeah, so personally in my life, what like my connection relationship with Jesus takes precedent over everything in my life. If I start doing so much where it drowns that out, mm. I have to cut those things out. And God, God loves me so much that if I don't do it, he will allow things to come my way to make me do it. So I just <laughs> rather get it figured out. And I'd rather learn that way. Yeah. You know, again, my connection with my wife, my family, on and on, you know, with work, whatever my main things, what are within my skill sets. Mm -hmm. But do work that, work that, work that. Again, I, I'm telling you, you can learn a lot when you have scarcity yeah. because then that's what ends up happening. People get a little bit out of balance is when they just start thinking, man, things are going well or, yeah. or they got a bunch. But man, what's, what's the main things? Trey, what do you think, man? Yeah, you know, two things come to mind, both, again, kind of analogies. The the first one and the idea of, like, scarcity brings clarity is I just think about being an undergrad and, you know, you get the student loan check at the beginning of the semester, <laughs> bank account's fat, and it's like, hey, no worries in the world. Hey, we all eating tonight. We good. all eating tonight. Yep, exactly. You're buying wings for everybody whenever you go out, like, yeah. and then come November, like, it's getting right towards Thanksgiving. It's like you start writing your letter, like, Dear Dad, I, need that I care have not been responsible <laughs> with what you have given me. The prodigal son is coming home. Please, please, Jesus, give me five dollars for my bank account because you know I got to overdraft right now. But just like whenever you get to that point so about being like, man, I have no money in my bank account, and yeah. 
I gotta eat. I like. I gotta. Nope. Sorry, I can't go yeah. out. Can't do this. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna so be good. walking to campus because I can't pay for parking. So, mm-hmm. just thinking about, like you said, Pastor Adrian, with thinking about innovation, thinking about other things. Whenever you you have less to work with, your mm-hmm. priorities come out. Uh, for me personally, one of the ways that this is reflected in just my own relationship with God is, you know, being in ministry, we work a lot of hours. We work a lot, six days a week here at Engage. We and work a lot of hours, yeah. just in case you wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> We're not at Starbucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I want, I want everybody to know this. Trust me. Trust me. If we had anybody on our staff that all they did was go sit at Starbucks, please understand this. They'd be finding a job. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. But you <laughs> and so I, I think it was just part of me whenever I realized, like, man, I don't have as much free time as I'm used to whenever mm-hmm. I started working here at Engage. And I realized in that that a lot of the time that I was spending with God was not as intentional as I thought it was. I wasn't mm-hmm. feeling the connection with him in the mm-hmm. same way. You know, if I'm riding around listening to a Bible Project podcast, that might be really educational and informative, but I wasn't connecting with God necessarily during that time period. That yeah. was, it was, you know, yeah, like, yeah, Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm listening to Amos right now. So, you know, it's like, Hey, this minor prophet, that's really cool. But I haven't told God what's on my heart right now. Mm-hmm. And yeah. whenever you start to think like pastor Adrian has been talking a lot about the slow drift that can happen. And so mm-hmm. feeling those places of that slow drift and the scarcity of free time and being very intentional about, Hey, what are you doing? What's your top five for how you connect with God? Yeah. It, you know, obviously, God should be the number one on your top five priority list in general, but then further breaking that down to say, yeah. how do I actually connect with God within that? Yeah. yeah. And I, and I, I mean, just, just to add some like practical from, from, a, from the standpoint of you're out there, this idea of scarcity, bringing clarity, this idea of COVID and all this kind of stuff and, and it bringing anxiety to you. One of the things that I, that I am actually learning now as we as we you know and you know nehemiah institute we've gone through self-awareness i've got my scores back and i'm really trying to work on like yeah. building up my self-awareness one of the things that it taught me to do is to always anticipate change and so for it's you perfect. if you're a person of great anxiety out there even in whether it's your job whatever you need to actually spend time take one day out of the week every week to, to actually write down what are the things in my life that could change how do i begin to actually prepare for those changes what can i do about that how can i circumvent that what what should what i what should i start anticipating in my life those things actually help when you especially when you're thinking about like man we're in the midst of covid what can change with my job at any moment all these kind of the things yeah. and and being around pastor adrian being around some other people really helping me see that your skill set whatever you're good at can be utilized wherever you go because mm-hmm. that That's that good. idea of of, yeah. of, it, of yep. your life speaking to to who you are no matter where you go you you you're going to bring whoever you are to the table and, and it doesn't matter where that is and so that's been re- those things have been super yeah. helpful for me yeah i i want to say this um with this idea uh and so because i know that many of you who are listening you know you may be wondering you know you're in that point of life where and again we all at some level always here where you feel like man like what am i doing man i I don't feel like you know maybe you feel like hey at your work um another place man i should you know i feel like i i i I have these dreams in my heart these desires to do these things and and you really feel like in some i mean really good ideas really Mm -hmm. good things but you feel like they don't get traction you don't feel like they're you know like they're moving and you feel like there's something you know more like i want to encourage you and again like from my own personal experience that at 42 that like man experience some things in my life right now that like i never thought i I always wanted in my 30s um but god man i could do this i could do that but what i realized goes to the scarcity thing the like when i didn't have like we started this church it was like you know it's like Man, it was like eighteen people, and it was ten thousand dollars, and and man, you know, you're and that, that was at the peak when everybody, man, you plant churches with a couple hundred thousand dollars, you you launch real big, you got all the time, you have a good building, you have the the welcoming. We were at you know Young Actors Theater, and mm-hmm. and that's why I told man, we're at Young Actors Theater. We don't know what set we're gonna have. Like, I mean, literally, we walk in there, they could be doing like legit, could be doing you know legally blonde, like, and that's a real thing. Um, you know, like man, we walked in, there, we had no idea. 
I mean, we have like literally, we come in there, you have like, ha- like a house set. So, I mean, we're like, well, you know, I think we have an empty stage and you don't. And so we're like, okay, what do we do? So, man, we got creative. So we met, we, we literally used something that was like, man, it looked like intentional on our part. Man, we had like a house set. So we had Sam Febres who played the, um, the electric guitar. We had him like at the top. Like, I mean, literally like 15 feet off, 20 feet off the ground, up there <laughs> playing the electric. And it looked really like we strategically did it. Right. Yeah. But, man, but it was scary. So we learned to innovate. And I tell people now, man, working with, you know, I'm in certain things and the consulting I do with people and companies that have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars as I work with them. What I'm able to bring is stuff I learned when I didn't have anything. Yeah. I learned so much wisdom that now is bringing value to organizations when I didn't have anything. I tell people scarcity brings clarity. Scarcity, if you're willing to embrace it, scarcity actually brings wisdom mm, that good. now you actually can you learn. I think I've learned more when I've had little than I way more than I did when I had a lot. I learned way more because you really boil it down yeah. to what's the point. Mm. You boil it down to the point. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like parents out here, we know like you don't got that much time. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, man, so all of a sudden, like all that extra, you know, man, like, I just, you know, like as a parent, you know, past day right now is, is, you know, having young ones, it's like, you know, some of the like trivial things, you know what I'm saying? Even like in your marriage, trivial things you would argue about, you're like, y'all are just too tired. That's so dumb. I'm not even <laughs> arguing with you about that. Why? Because like, you're always like scared, like, yo, I'm tired. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, is this a big deal? You know what I'm saying? Like, we're going to, if we're going to argue, it's going to be over something that's yeah. like, it's like, it's a big deal. You yeah. know what I mean? So it does bring that. I want to ask you guys this question. We're going to, again, as we uh, get a couple more is that, you know, Pastor, you know, Dave talking this idea of hardware, um, you know, hardware and operating systems in church. And so, again, you guys' mind, you know, the idea of like hardware versus, you know, kind of like the software, right? Mm-hmm. Like, what do you, what does that mean to you? When we talk about hardware versus software in a church, what does that mean? Um, I, I, I it, there, there's a couple different things running through my mind, but, but one is hardware could be, you know, as far as a church, Hey, here are, here are some, some things that are non-negotiable when it comes to Mm -hmm. church, you know, your church service, your Sunday gathering, your preaching, your, your, you know, your baptism, sacraments, sacraments, you know, those, that, those are, those are hardware. And when he was saying that, as far as your, your OS, your operating system, he, he, you know, he said something and he just kind of, he just kind of kept it moving, but he talked about things like your, your values. Um, he, he talked about, you, you know, he, he was talking about some, in, in some instances, your leadership pipeline. What is it? What does a disciple actually look like today? How are you kind of training people? And that's more, that's more important. And I, well, I don't think you necessarily saying that's like, I wouldn't say that's necessarily more important, but when it comes to like how we're, how we're uh, leading the church. I think mm-hmm. those are, he was trying to say, man, those things are way more important in terms yeah. of oh, man, the, the life of Jesus in people. Don't some, don't get so stuck on this is how it's got to be. And these are the four principles and these are whatever, but uh, man, really what, what is it? you know, the life of Jesus that that's producing the life of Jesus in your people. And a lot of that comes from pipelines, values, yeah. you know, some things mm-hmm. you're making. So Trey, yeah. so, one of the ways that I like to have fun is I just find something that I don't know anything about that seems interesting <laughs> and I just read until I feel like I know enough about it. And God, then I drop are, that you are, and dude, I switch over to the next. Dude, thing. you <laughs> are such your dad's kid. It's unbelievable. But keep going. So one of the things, my, my COVID project was I was like, man, I want to know how computers work. So I built a computer. I did that over the course of like okay. three months. Just wow. was like, hey. I'm going to, I'm going to buy these parts. I'm going to figure it out, put it together, wow. play some games on it. When I have free time now, it is collecting dust in the corner. Most <laughs> of the time. But, uh, anyway, so, so looking at that, like the software of a computer, whatever you think about it, like your, you know, your Microsoft suite is more or less your, your DNA of your computer. And so mm-hmm. thinking about that from a church context, to me, that is what is the, the DNA of the church? What mm-hmm. is the mm-hmm. contents inside of the container you're pushing out? Yeah. What is no matter where you're sending people, no matter what they're doing they're going to have this embedded inside of them that this is who they are this is what we do this is engaged that has been put on them that ultimately is god coming through them Uh, the hardware is you know that's that's the thing where one of the things i didn't realize when i was building a computer is how easily that stuff can be changed out and upgraded over time and switched Mm -hmm. in and out so Mm -hmm. to me to kind of use the analogy pastor adrian likes to use a lot that's more of the container Mm -hmm. and so 
whenever you think about that in a church context, looking at more uh, stuff that what might be your kids ministry, it might be small groups, it might be things that have way more of a modular thing where we're doing this for this season, and then we're going to change it and do something else, because this is what God's calling us to in this time, this is working right now, this is where mm-hmm. our church body is, this is how we're reaching people. Mm-hmm. And then another time, it might be way more of you know what, we're dropping this. And because this is a time, for example, where we're building, uh, we're really focusing on innovative reconcilers or we're mm-hmm. really focusing on mm-hmm. corporate prayer in this season or something like that and pushing that forward. Yeah, no, and, and as you were talking, I wanted to kind of bring this up, you know, because we spent a lot of time even, we spent that over COVID, you know, sorry, we brought in a, um, you know, a consultant to actually help us um, to figure out like, you know, kind of some of that, the the stuff and how it plays out you know again like you know our you know the the why the you know why you put this together kind of the dna is you know like man we want to see people connect to god one another their meaningful work in the earth right, right. and so that's like in the dna our values yeah. are in the dna but that does then in your operating system so now like that it goes but then you start playing oh man like basic training like that's mm-hmm. a part now again operating systems can always upgrade operate you know trace and they can upgrade they change you know what i'm saying they get better so that's why i always tell people like you know i mean we're always constantly wanting to get better and we always want to do what works because in some seasons man you know we first started basic training and engagement it was eight weeks when we first right. started it was <laughs> yeah. eight weeks right and you know we we're like all right well that's a little too long you know what i'm saying and i was like maybe maybe it was taking we were doing like you know foundations you know like we we're doing a purple book yeah, so right, it's like it's maybe right. like eight to ten weeks just yeah. like we first first started we're like okay well man we knew man if you you went through that yo you're in you know what i'm saying, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're really in so we dropped that down and then man we added to it and then i know when pastor Derek came on staff and and that's one of the first things he was tasked mm-hmm. like man let's take it and then and watching what they've done with basic training and that's one thing i love when we talk about the empowerment and this will, this will, I'll get back to the, the operating system. I mean, going into basic training now, and I'll, every now I walk in, I look, I'm like, yo, I could not have done this better. Like, this is like far beyond. That's the part where I love now seeing things in our church where I'm like, I don't even know what's going on. And I walk in, I'm like, Man, it's incredible. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> when you walk in there, like you hope for it, but yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. You know, we did the new rules conference. I'll pull, I'm like, this is unreal yeah, was, what was, awesome. was developed. I still can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, like, wow, you know what I'm like that, what we were able to what we were able to pull off and on and on. And so again, but my point though is that, but man, basic training. We it just, you know, it's like, hey, it was like, man, it was kinda like, you know, like like Microsoft and it was or it was like, you know, AOL 2.0, 3.0. We just keep getting better. You know what? And we'll do something like, man, let's keep we keep working at it. Why? Because it matters to us. Mm-hmm. And eventually if that operating system doesn't work, but what does not change is people need to understand the foundation of the Christian faith. That don't change. Right. That's right. hardware. So however we get that, that could be a one time class. That could be 80 weeks. Who knows? But that never changes, right? Mm-hmm. But then you go into the idea of man becoming an owner, commitment to owner's class, man. And we've done multiple uh, you know, kind of um of, of ways that we've done owner's class. And we, you know, we oh man, we go here, we did it this way, and we just constantly keep upgrading, getting yeah. it better. We keep tweaking it to make it better, uh better to to make it better to get across the point we're trying to. Then man, we jumped into and now we have, you know, we're serving on teams to uh now Nehemiah Institute. And you know what happens, man? Nehemiah Institute, that started off as an incubation from the New Rules Project. Yeah, right. And we did it, we did it. And then we're like, man, this is the next big step. So we have people in New World. And you listen, and this one, what you guys understand, when you really work on operations and operating, because look, New Rules Project, there are people who had such life changing experiences in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And man, we told them, we're switching this from the New Rules Project to Nehemiah Institute. Some people thought, man, we had literally just, I <laughs> blasphemed the Holy Spirit at that moment, right? And I get it because yeah. it was like, but here's the thing. We have no sacred cows in this church. And yeah. here's what you got to understand. I was the one who made it yeah. and invented it. But at the end of the day, I was like, no, this is what's best for, again, right. that next level. And I'm watching and I'm like, oh, yeah, we absolutely, you know what happened? We'll go through Nehemiah Institute and it's all experiment. And oh, man. Three years from now, like man, somebody will come in like, yo, why do we get this? It's like having your, it's like having children. If I was there, you know, it's like it's yeah. like I'm saying, man, your first child is literally a test dummy, hundred <laughs> percent. Like Peyton now, like my third dude, she's like, they look at us like, yo, you don't ever spank her ever. Like you know what I'm saying? Like Jalen was over there on the full, like you know what I'm saying? Jalen, man, we were cheating Jalen like it was like the third right round. This thing. you know, we had Jalen like we were like marching, like you know what I'm saying? We had that my man like he's in an army around this thing. 
And um, but my point is like you get better as you yeah. go, yeah. right? Yeah. And so anyway, so my point is this, you know, and I wanted to say that to everyone out there is like you understand, like that's the that's the and we don't have there's one thing about engage, we don't have a lot within the operating system. Mm-hmm. Because why? If we have a lot in the operating system, then we can't send you out to do your meaningful work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Our job is to. Our, our, what, what's the point? Because remember, like Trey was saying, the point of an operating system is you're only trying to. There's a system within that you're trying to produce yeah. something that comes right. out and, for us. And that yeah. was that was something that was interesting because we talk about scarcity bringing clarity. When he said, "Yo, people are only gonna stay in your church church up to four years." Right. So you think right. about something like that, and you think about our church. We're, we're trying to. Okay, then we need to be laser focused on what's most important. So when you, if you, you know, at Engage, you're wondering, well, why don't we have this and why don't we have this? We're st- we're trying to stay lighter on our feet. The more OS you have, the clunkier it yeah. gets, the harder mm-hmm. it is to move. And man, we have to we have to stay focused. So I love that. Yeah, I love and, that. And you know what's interesting is that then, you know, and again, there are people who leave. I was talking about there are people who leave. They don't like something you say. You offend them, whatever. That's fine. But also, here's the reality. It is unrealistic mm-hmm. as leaders and, and pastors to think, oh, man, people going to be with you. Mm. Like majority of people will be there for the lifetime. They're not. They yeah, are not. Right. And sometimes we've had this romanticized thing, yeah. especially we care about spiritual family. Mm-hmm. All we care about is man. And, and, and that we actually that if you're leaving, you're not doing it because like, man, like, you know, you're you're doing it in a way that's honoring. Anybody will tell you this. We've left our church who's come to us and say, hey, man, we feel God's leading us in man, great. How do we pray for you? How do we bless you? We're not sitting here arguing with you. And yeah, some people right. that bothers them. So some people want to come in the wrong way because they think they're like, oh, oh no, 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 please stay. I'm like, no, if God's telling you that, like, why am I going to fight God? You hear from God, like, go. Mm-hmm. And we want to send people out. And I think so many times it's, we, we try to hold on yeah. versus realizing, man, like, the, we are stewards. This is, and this goes back to the thing. You're talking about decentralization is this. What God, I think, is emphasizing is this. We are going from empire to kingdom Mm -hmm. we are literally stewards people say we're kings and queens yes we are steward kings and queens yeah we in the kingdom your job is to steward meaning this the earth is the earth is the lord and all that is in it Mm -hmm. meaning people money time talent building it's all god's so what does that mean my job it just i am a listen i am a kingdom person who things pass through our things is God, what do you want to do with it? Mm-hmm. Okay, my job then is to invest like a good money manager. You invest in the best investment. And again, at the end of the day, a good money manager ain't going to do whatever they want to do with your money. They're right. going to ask you before they do it. Mm-hmm. So if God's all God's, our responsibility as a church leadership, our job as individuals, God, my life is yours. Where do you want me to invest I am your, I'm an asset. I'm your asset, God. Where do you want to invest me into the earth mm-hmm. to bring That's a great. return? Yeah. And most people don't ever ask that. We're mostly telling God. Yeah. Can you imagine your money literally say, hey, fam, invest me into this stock yeah. right here? No, <laughs> you put it there. And yeah. that's what we have to do. And how much more can we just rest in the fact mm. that how good God is, that if he's going to place you somewhere, there's going to be a there's an, when you go let me just say when you go somewhere god tells you to go it's always a return the roi is unbelievable right. now the return on your investment may not be what you think is going to be mm-hmm. but it's always a kingdom return on investment when you allow god to sow you where he wants to sow you and i think that's how we begin to live in this new way um you know kind of as we build forward um you know so as we come to a close i want to ask you guys um this kind of thing is this is that you know we talk a lot about bivocational ministry things like that here like, what is the, let me, no, let me back up. I don't even want to ask that question. We'll scratch that here, okay? We'll do this, okay. Guys, as we come to a close, here's the last thing I want to ask. You know, what do you guys see in the future? Like, when you look at the church and you look at what God wants to do, what do you guys see? You know what I mean? We heard what Pastor Dave, you know, was talking about. Again, what do you guys kind of see you know, happening, or maybe even a desire you want to see for whether it's engaged or there's a church at large or God's people here in North America. Yeah. I think uh, a couple of things that I think that are important to me right now that, that, that I either I want to see or think, you know, is, is, is coming. And one that's in my heart lately is, the uh the story or the narrative that we get to tell about what it actually means to be in in relationship mm-hmm. uh so i've been unpacking some stuff and, and one of the things that i could that i could clearly see is man if, if 
it really, man, if we if we do, if we if there is good news about Jesus and it can't change the way that we actually relate to one another, we don't have a gospel to, to, mm, to give yeah, to the world. Yeah. And we're in trouble now because we've lost the plot of the human, the human story of what it means to relate to one another. And culture is telling a different one. Um, and so I, I think I think one of the things that I really hope to see, because I really do believe I really do believe that there is there is a, just like most people, like you can just kind of tell like, man, God's shaking stuff up and God's stirring something you, you're hoping for a move of God. So that's, I guess that's mm. two. That's the second thing I want to say. I really want to see yeah. is a, is a, another move of God. But I, and I do think there is a, a, a great like humility um, that is coming. And I think part of that is, is, uh, is equity and how, how we, how we, uh, uh, how we treat each other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love um, that. But, uh, but I think what else do I think is, uh, is on the horizon? I, I do. I, I, I really, I really do. I, I really do think that what's on the horizon is a is a, a a beautiful beautiful picture of what it means when Jesus says when the when the the the, the kingdom is like a, a a a the seed that falls into the ground and then it sprouts up wow. and everybody every whether you're in the kingdom or whether you're not, you get the benefits of the kingdom. You get the shade. That's good. So mm. I, I think that what's happening, what will come is a, I'm a friend of Jesus. I spend time with him. He's going to give me, he's, as he so, as I sow in, in relationship with him into relationship with others. And I'm, and I'm sown out because all the, you know, the churches are like, Hey man, it's priesthood of the believer. When I go out, Man, I get, I got, I got relationship with God. I'm showing up with His mm, ideas, yeah. things for human flourishing, and and man, everybody gets the benefit. My job, my coworkers, my neighborhood. That's what I desire. That's what I long to see is 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 that priesthood of the believer, where, where man, people are actually taking that responsibility, and it's kingdom type of stuff that's happening, mm-hmm. and you don't have to necessarily. Sleep Slap the Christian name on it or anything like that, because the hum the the human story is the story about human flourishing. So you don't have to make it Christian. It just what is as we are Christ followers. Wow, I love and it. I hope that's what's coming. Love sure. it. That's awesome. Yep. Um, just kind of thinking about this, I think that going back to some of the same themes that we've talked about just in this podcast so far. Mm. So looking at scarcity, just not only scarcity in the idea of having a laser focused lean church model, but also Mm. looking at there's going to be a scarcity of believers. There's going Mm. to be an increased scarcity of churches. And I see that Mm. looking down line of some of the legislation that could come out, potentially losing tax exemption with the church. So literally having a scarcity Mm. of resources to be able to use Use. But I think that if we're doing our job and we're building leaders, building for this future and planning ahead, what this is actually going to do is help to build a sense of resilience and responsibility oh, yeah. oh, in our church great. body. Uh, kind of that same idea, like college kid, low funds in the bank account. Mm-hmm. You you gain a sense of responsibility mm-hmm. for that spending in that moment. Mm-hmm. Not only that, but with that sense of responsibility, you gain an awareness so looking for like what what should the future what should we be put be pushing towards it should be helping people build a self-awareness within themselves and that resilience to remain self-aware mm-hmm. and with that self-awareness helping them realize what skills that god has given them what ways he has created them to move forward and you know one of the ways i love pastor adrian's had a couple days ago was gaining uh, an awareness of where your yard is so thinking about that area mm-hmm. that you can affect it's not it's not the entire world it's mm-hmm. it's your yard it's your neighborhood mm-hmm. that area figuring out what skills that god has given you you so that you mm. can effectively plow your yard so you can yeah. take that over and ultimately that sense of responsibility and awareness of your skills is going to develop wisdom and it's going to affect relationships around you mm-hmm. so looking at people that are self-aware they have the self-control and resilience to be there they know what skills they're bringing they have the wisdom to make the right decisions and yeah. ultimately they are bridging the gap between the secular and the sacred and they're mm-hmm. they're being innovative reconcilers. They're, they're being people that are going in and making change for the world and for the positive. Yeah, man. I think, you know, Trey, I think you did. I mean, again, both of you guys, I think yeah. Pastor Derek, what's really interesting about both of you, Pastor Derek is always like, again, what I think you did with your, what you're saying is a lot of it is the 
the and again they're both they both have these but like the yeah. heartbeat for you is like man like i want this to be within these people to yeah. have this so i love what trade does it's like okay mm -hmm. but then like the idea of here's the like you know yeah. everybody, here's the like this is the flow this gotta be the heartbeat and then, yeah. then i love what you did travel here's the yeah. container yeah okay this got you know like resilience and has to be here and you know i think for me it's like the target of where it's at i just think that you know why i i feel like i'm so passionate and 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 where i think this idea of innovative reconcilers goes is because you know probably there's been a lot of moments in this during COVID that god i feel like man has given me these aha moments right these revelatory moments but man, the one that I think just sticks out to me the most, um, and this will go to where I think things are going, is um, Nehemiah 8. And as much as I've preached from this book, as much as I love this book, as much as I've read this book, the fact that I, in reading this, I skipped over a part or just assumed, I just applied what I thought, you know, of like, oh, Ezra, he brings the law out but skipping over the fact that they asked Ezra to bring the law out. And hmm. in that happening, realizing, you know, feeling very clear, you know, from the Lord is that as Nehemiah brought reform, hmm. as Nehemiah added to the infrastructure of a city, um, a city that a, a country that was an economic downturn. I mean, they were in a were they were, they were in a recession slash depression during that time. A people with no identity, um, a people with no sense of like of of who they were. Um, a people who had no direction. I mean, a really lost group of people after, um, you know, coming back in after being in exile, you know, and studying Jeremiah and realizing before exile and all this stuff and looking at Daniel, but coming back, here's the thing I got was that what I'm really passionate about and I see is I believe normally time, you know, it's revival, right? Revival, reformation, whatever. I actually believe what will happen is that as the people of God bring reform, and it'll be the creative minority bringing reform. I think revival will actually proceed. I think the, vibe, the revival will come mm. after reform. I think it'll be like Nehemiah, where people are going into places, spaces, adding value like Pastor, in their neighborhoods, at their workplace. I mean, right. just, I mean, being released. Yeah. And there's like, man, like these are needs and these are, and that goes across the board. I mean, that could be big ideas and culture and, and industry. That could be, man, just, hey, in the neighborhood, just in your neighborhood, realizing, man, like getting kids in the neighborhood to actually, man, we want to build like some community within the neighborhood. And maybe you're somebody in your neighborhood where you start doing a gathering every yeah. month and in the neighborhood comes out and and man it's just building yeah. community and family because bare people so whatever whatever those things are and what i think that leads to is revival but i think because of how people will build and being excellent being empowering being kingdom having it with humility being excellent that people will be like that of ezra says can you bring the law of god tell me about this god why do you do what you do i actually believe that's when revival will ultimately take place but i think a little bit different it'll be like that idea of reformation coming adding value and so that's why that's what i see in the future um that's what i think is super important about us launching innovative reconcilers yeah. um because i think as we go forward man we're gonna have a chance to really see some you know some real some real impact and so well guys hey here's what we you know as we go through this and we come to a close is that you know we want to encourage you to make sure you're thinking through man as you go back through, as you list some of these questions, ask yourself, man, what do you see? What do you think is going to happen? You know, what are things in your life? You know, as we ask the question today, like where's scarcity, you know, where's some things we need to bring some clarity in your own life? You know, what does it mean to even in our own lives, bring, begin to decentralize things, you know, how is this, you know, we can hear from the church, but how's this working in your home? Um, yeah, do right. your children feel empowered or do you run, you know, at home? Is it more like, you know, so much so like where it's one way, you know, but your kids are, you know, they're 16, 17, 18. Mm -hmm. Are you empowering them or are you treating them in a certain way? I mean, the ideas as we continue to go of like, man, what's software within the home, what's the operating system of your home, you know, how you're developing and, and on and on. Again, I want to encourage you guys, just don't you hear this and like, man, I'm not, you know, the, the church like that, but how do I dive into this practically? I think it can really help. And so, well, guys, hey, thank you so much again for listening. Again, make sure that, again, when, these, when this comes out via social, you get that update um, via, you know, a podcast, with podcasts, a platform you listen to, make sure you share, let people 
people know again though this is in the house, this is for engaged church what we are seeing i mean i have people in the community people beyond the community who literally have come to say man, i listen to street theology man it really helps me and these people aren't a part we know this will go beyond we know god is raising up innovative reconcilers really across the world so make sure you share us uh, so we want to be an encouragement to people you know because there's people yeah. out there man who are like wondering is somebody thinking this way and, and we want them to know yeah there are some who are thinking this way of what's to come and we just want to be a source of a blessing to them so guys until next time we'll talk to you soon on street theology